This bow tie was uh, a gift from a friend in college who became a follower of Christ. So it's a special memory of him when I wear it. I do think it's very important for the professor to not just be imparting information, like kind of a digital download, like just plugging in to the mind and downloading the information, but that there be um, a life and a character. My aspiration, my desire is that my life and my character would authenticate the teaching that I'm giving. Not that I've arrived, but I desire that for myself. At the same time, I am in many ways uh, my own worst critic. And basically, all of my classes, I'm dissatisfied with at all the time a certain amount. Like, it's just how dissatisfied I am. But I think part of that dissatisfaction with teaching is what drives me. I'm like, how can I do this better? How can I improve this? I want students to learn. I want them to go out of here knowing what they need to know. I want them to be able to do what they need to do. I want them to be passionate. Being a pastor has had a profound effect upon me as a professor, as a teacher, as a, as a minister. I think it's made me have a practical bent in the classroom, so I'm, I know what, what it's like. The rubber meets the road in, in ministry. I think I teach because I feel like that's who God has made me to be. He's made me a teacher. I have to do that to be faithful with the gifts He's given me and what He's called me to do. But there's also there's a, the joy of relationship with, with students, seeing them grow and learn and wanting, you know, wanting them to have an experience here at our seminary where they, they leave saying, I got what I came for, I'm equipped for ministry. Not only am I equipped for ministry, I love God more. I, that's, that's my goal, that's what gives me great joy. I've always, I've always been a runner since, I mean, junior high school uh, when I ran cross country and track. I uh, always ran long distance, so, you know, um, the mile or cross country, three miles or something. I felt good. I enjoyed it. It's like Eric Liddell, you know. I believe God made me for a purpose, but I can't say he made me fast, but I can say he made me able to run. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. You know, I r love running. And I don't have a lot of spare time in my life. That's why I'll invite students and say, hey, if you want to hang out with me, I'd love to hang out with you, but I have time to just sit around and drink coffee. You know, let's, if you want to run with me, let's run. So it gives me a chance to, to hang out with some students and chat and, um, and hope, hopefully encourages them Most students don't know that if you die as a professor here or you retire, you get, you get a plot over at Cayville Cemetery. I'm willing to wait on that one, but uh, on, on receiving that perk. But uh, I do love that, that, I love the depth of that tradition. I love to go over there a few times a year 
and uh, to see, you know, see the graves of all the of the faculty who taught here in the past, and just to feel that I'm part of that longer story that's very rich and deep. It's kind of cool to think about being buried alongside the people you taught with. To be a professor here at Southern is a great honor. It's a great privilege. I feel like I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. Being a father is the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to read Greek and teach Greek than it is to be a father, really, uh, because there's no, like, real instruction manual. I mean, you know, of course we have the, the Word of God, we have the Holy Spirit, but there's no, like, this is what's on the test today kind of thing. I mean, it's, you never know what's coming, and I don't know that I'm necessarily emotionally uh, suited uh, for for uh, all the ups and downs of fatherhood, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit more of a sometimes can be introverted. <laughs> sometimes with three girls, there can be some dramatic moments, uh, but but they're they're delightful. Being a father is a wonderful gift from God, and I love my daughters. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't trade, like I tell them, I wouldn't trade them for a million sons. Sometimes we, you know, Dad, do you want a boy instead? I I wouldn't trade you for a million sons. But it is something that, you know, I, I just don't ever feel like I'm really doing that great a job at. You know, I, I uh, feel like I'm constantly growing into it. It's, it's, I never get my hands around it. It's always changing. As the girls get older, there's different needs and there's different, but, you know, they're so sweet and so patient and forgiving and um, affirming. It is, it is something that, you know, it has been, has been a great challenge for me to learn how to do, you know. I didn't come out of the box with all that preloaded in my head or anything, so. And, um, you know, and when we fail, that's one thing that I've learned to do. My lovely wife has, you know, helped and modeled this for me and with me, tried to, that when we fail, as we inevitably do, your daddy was impatient with you, it was wrong, you know, please forgive me for that, that was wrong for me to have raised my voice uh, about that. And, they, and they, they forgive, you know, they're like, I forgive you, daddy, I love you. And then they'll say, I'm sorry that I didn't obey you, <laughs> it was really wrong for me, you know. And the, there's two options in life as a father. One, you're a hypocrite and you never admit you're wrong. Or two, when you're wrong, you say you're sorry and you ask for forgiveness. So, so it's a, we, we get a good chance to model repentance and forgiveness in, in life. My wife and girls tell me I'm a lot sillier when I'm not around my students. I act really, Daddy, you can be so silly, you know, if they saw you, because I'll act silly and do nonsense kind of stuff, dance with them or whatever. Also, I have to confess, wearing a suit is a cultural accommodation. I much prefer old jeans and a, and a t-shirt and a, you know, old sweatshirt. That's that's kind of more more my style. Maybe just a little freer when I'm not uh, in a suit. I'm grateful that the Lord saved a sinner like me. Yeah, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that the Lord not only saved me, but He, he graciously allows me to serve Him and uses me in spite of my many failings and even through my failings and uses me in spite of my weaknesses, in spite of my selfishness, in spite of my pride, in spite of my flawed and tainted work that he still is able to use that
for his good, for, for, our, for our good, for his glory. I'm grateful for that.